I don't know if it was apparent at first, but I think over time the loss of the Negro Leagues began to be more felt and that people began to understand that the loss of the Negro Leagues was something significant. It was felt in many ways that were tangible, you know, when we start talking about all of the people that it takes to make a team run, whether we're talking about bus drivers or, you know, people working concessions or taking tickets. All of those people typically came from within that Black community. But then there's also the intangible of in the midst of all of the stuff that we have to deal with as Black people in this society, this place where we can go, where we can get dressed to the nines, where we can hang out, where we can root for our favorite players and are free to just be us without the white gays. They lost that too. What happened starting in the 50s, a lot of the black folks who had the opportunity to leave those communities, to go to college, to rise within white professions, did so. And they left folks who were stuck in those communities to be on their own at a time when they were more vulnerable than ever as a result of the declining industries, as a result of the devastating impact of urban renewal, these housing projects and highway projects. So the demise of the Negro Leagues foreshadows a larger crisis for black America in those communities. When you look at just the Crawford Grill and, and the, across the street, is a black barber shop. And it's fascinating, after the integration of uh, major leagues, you, you, you see the deterioration. It's, it's just a devastating uh, to the black community. When we talk about integration, it was good morally, it was good socially, and it moved us in ways in which we probably never ever dreamed possible but that progress came at a cost.